Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin are friends, best friends. I wonder what their text messages look like right now. Probably a lot of this. Now, no one understands an authoritarian leader who's trying to reclaim his historical territory better than another authoritarian leader who's trying to reclaim his historical territory, which means so far, these guys are sticking together. And one way to do that is to make sure everyone knows your bestie is right and the guy he's fighting with is wrong, even if it means brainwashing a billion people, especially the children. Necessary. According to Chinese state-run media, all Chinese nationals trapped in Ukraine have been safely evacuated to other parts of Ukraine. Thanks, motherland. When Russia's invasion first started, Chinese media initially easily slotted the Russian invasion into a narrative where Russian President Vladimir Putin was the put-upon hero and NATO and the West were the malevolent villains. Get ready for class. And that's just the warm-up. It gets more intense. And that's not just one isolated classroom. Online videos show this is a trend. You know, like a viral TikTok dance, but way more aggressive. This is now officially the creepiest viral trend. It almost makes me miss the Harlem Shake. And it's even creepier with older students. Why are Chinese students being forced to recite all of the different weaponry Ukraine had? The real lesson here is that Ukraine used to be strong thanks to the Soviet Union, but now it sucks. And if that's not weird enough, there's this. Okay, I'm going to spare you from having to watch this entire thing. So, let me summarize. In this morality tale, Russia and Ukraine are the sons of the Soviet Union. Sure, older brother Russia and younger brother Ukraine have some family squabbles, but everything is fine until Ukraine decides to throw it all in Russia's face by embracing Russia's worst enemy, NATO. <laughs> Yes, we are so happy and fortunate in your embrace.